My name is Patricia Florisi, and welcome to Passages to Innovation Acceleration. We humans often delineate periods of our history with measurable differences in the way we work, live, and think. In the 14th century, for example, we abandoned the Middle Ages to be reborn by a cultural revolution in the Renaissance period that introduced amazing advancements in arts and in the sciences. These fundamental changes of how we see and do things often bring major improvements in our level of literacy, quality of life, economic conditions, and more. And as a result, society races forwards. All these changes are the direct impact of small and big ideas that have lived to become innovations. And what is most exciting about the decades in which we have been living is that we have been experiencing not one, but many phenomena that are fundamentally redefining the speed at which innovation is introduced, evolves, and spreads across the globe. And it is on these passages to innovation acceleration that we will now focus. First, let us talk about big data. You may attend different social gatherings than I do, but every single smashing nerd get-together that I go to these days, all we talk about is big data, even when many think that we are not. For example, when we talked about the recent birth of Britain's Prince George, we were actually analyzing the rate at which his birth generated big data in social media. And if you must know, the first day of his birth generated terabytes of data in two weeks alone. And when we talk about folding at home, we are not referring to domestic laundry matters. We are talking about using more than 5.9 million CPUs from home computers like yours and mine to help solve heavy math equations on top of scientific big data to figure out how proteins fold in our bodies in the hope of finding new methods to cure cancer, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. And when we talk about daily life, we discuss how businesses can use big data to gain insight on our buying behavior so they can influence it. For example, by analyzing my location and my tea drinking habits, my favorite coffee shop can text me an electronic coupon as I am about to pass a competitor shop, <laughs> reducing my temptation of going there instead. And as the seven billion of us are innocently bombarded by these big data-driven innovations today, we can't possibly imagine how big the impact of these innovations will actually be. You see, big data is a major innovation accelerator, not just because of how big big data is, and big it is, but because the great majority of this data is new data. New data that has never, ever been collected and preserved before. And it is now giving us thousands of new insights we could have never realized. Consider, for example, the visibility into our social fabric that can be obtained by analyzing big data collected by Facebook and tweet interactions. By harvesting this data, we can easily devise social media techniques to spread ideas quickly and globally, such as when a single video reaches billions of people within days. But on the other hand, this new data is technology's natural resource, giving us the raw material to make many more big data-driven innovations possible. Consider, for example, the traditional rules-based machine for automating the translation of content between languages. These applications typically use grammar rules specific to the source language to break a sentence into words, translate these words into the target language, and then assemble the words in a new sentence. And that's exactly how the Portuguese sentence, a bolsa está fechada, 
is translated to the English sentence, the purse is closed, when in a financial setting, the most common usage translates to the stock exchange is closed. Now, compare this method with the statistical machine translation used by Google. Google Translator analyzes big data that has resulted from the digitization of a broad collection of literature, including books and official documents, and from existing websites, all that have been translated from one language to another by humans. It then tries to find patterns between the different translations of the same content, and it starts creating a translation model, mapping words, sentence fragments or entire sentences from one language to another. It then repeats this process billions of times against as many translations as it can find, creating indices that rank how many times a given fragment in one language has been translated to a specific fragment in another language, creating intelligence not just in the mapping per se, but also around the rank of the most commonly used translation of certain texts. And the bigger the data set, the more exact the ranking, the more precise the translation becomes, all without any human intervention. Now, together. Ready? Wow! Amazing, right? But that's not all. Far from it. Because along had come another phenomenon the cloud. Cloud refers to massive amounts of processing power, storage capacity, and networking connectivity that major enterprises, communities, universities, and cloud providers are building and aggregating. These providers typically assemble massive amounts of infrastructure and offer them storage and computing as a service where consumers pay per usage on demand with zero capital investment required. Consider, for example, CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, whose large hadron collider at the Franco-Swiss border generates one petabyte of data per second. By 2015, CERN expects to finish building a cloud with 16,000 physical servers capable of running 150,000 virtual machines. And all of that capacity will be made available to 11,000 physicists around the globe working on official CERN experiments. By providing innovators with access to massive amounts of technology resources at unprecedented scale and with zero capital investment required, cloud becomes another major innovation accelerator. But again, that's not all. Far from it, because along came something really more subtle and small. So small, in fact, that many of us run the risk of missing it because it is happening in nanoscale. And to measure something in nanoscale is to measure it in the 10 to the negative 9 of an atomic diameter, one billionth of a meter or one nanometer. And in the world of nanoscale, nanotechnology is a technology whose manufacturing operates on nanoscale parts, bringing innovation that is built with atomic precision and can come in nano sizes, such as in nanomedicine, where nanobots can be injected in our bodies to measure vital signs and more, and even intervene if necessary. But yet, that's not all. Far from it. Because along came many other accelerators, such as the rapid adoption of mobile devices worldwide and the rapid incorporation of social media technologies that have fundamentally transformed the way we interact. And again, together. Ready? Wow! So now let us compare all of that 
with a similar phenomena that occurred in the 1400s. By many accounts, we can say that Gutenberg's innovation of the printing press caused a big data event, as back then, scripts were counted in the thousands. And only 50 years later, there were 20 million of them. And the ability to publish never stopped growing. And yet, it took centuries for that big data innovation to scale to a global scale and to ignite more innovations at an accelerated pace. In fact, it was not until the 1650s that reading material became widely available, resulting in a significant increase in our level of literacy. Begging one question, why? Well, that's when the social and economical context of an innovation cannot be ignored, because they greatly influence the speed at which innovation spreads. You see, in the 1400s, there were two bestsellers, the Bible, and then commentaries to the Bible, mainly in Latin, that could only be written by the clergy, a huge minority at the time, which severely restricted the number of writers or content producers. And where were the readers, you may ask? At that time, 80% of the European adult population did not know how to sign their names, let alone understand Latin, which severely restricted the number of readers or content consumers. And how fast could press engines be produced? Not too fast at all, because Gutenberg was very secretive about his many innovations, as there was no other way of protecting them. In contrast, the many phenomena we have been living are really interwoven in a very interesting way, rendering obsolete many of the obstacles faced in the 1400s and filling each other in a very catalytic manner. You see, while in the 1400s there was a limited number of readers and writers, the combination of cloud, nanotechnology, and social media brings a surplus of both for big data today. And applications such as Facebook and YouTube provide a simple way to consume and share data to a great percentage of the population, much simpler than printing, reading, and writing by offering rich media content such as audio and video, and out of a sudden, we all became consumers and producers of big data today. The digital era and the easy access to the cloud often also eliminated some of the limitations of place and time, allowing content produced in one place to be accessed from anywhere, resulting in big data being shared and disseminated everywhere. And that's not all, far from it. Because by combining these technologies together, we have created perhaps one of the most significant mechanisms to spread innovations in this age, the 3D printing. Where instead of printing the picture of things, you print the things themselves, potentially disrupting supply chain models as we know them today. You see, using 3D printing, we can manufacture here, in near real time, an object whose design was potentially created by a community of people scattered around the globe that collaborated and worked using cloud and big data technologies. Get prepared. It's the last time. Together, what we say? Wow! You see, together, these passages to innovation acceleration will delineate a new era, an era of fast exploration innovation, where the creative process is really condensed from the moment in which an idea is conceived anywhere and everywhere, and then adapted and adjusted through a collaborative social media-based iterations of several designs of the innovation anywhere and everywhere, and then analyzed, adapted, and adjusted some more, perhaps in near real time, potentially leveraging the economies and processing power of the cloud, probably based on massive amounts of big data that have been collected and pre-processed by nano and mobile devices anywhere and everywhere. 
and then manufactured with atomic precision using 3D printing and nanotechnologies anywhere and everywhere. And then manufactured and introduced to the market anywhere, everywhere, and here. And as this happens, society races forward. Thank you very much. <laughs>